Aha! Hello, Nagawa. Could be a big, big risk, risk trying this, but um, rebuilt on the back of this card, as you know, and took measurements on the subframe, subframe mountings, then took check measurements on the uh, two holes each side on the heel board, and the two holes each side on the new boot floor. Everything seemed to correlate, but the proof's in the pudding, as they say. So this is the first time I've lifted the subframe into place. And I do know from watching other YouTube channels that people have really struggled to get the subframe in. You know, they've been half, a, half an inch out in one place, half a hole. But we'll see if I can managed to lift this thing in on my own without breaking my back. So, subframe mountains are loosely bolted into position on the subframe. Just using the issue where these uh, rear mountings don't drop down behind the uh, the rear balance closing panels. Let's see if I can uh, just turn these into the right position. So the subframe slid in very tight, I've got to say, um, but it did slide in. Seems to be the knackies when you're trying to slide it between this point here and the heel board is get this trunnion to drop in first and then slide the front leading edge of the subframe down so it skids down the face of the of the heel board. Uh, I've got a got a fix in in that side just to temporarily locate it. U and F, remember. Coming around the rear to the other side. Those two trunnion holes line up. It's a bit hit and miss, especially with new nylon um, subframe mounting. They're very solid, a little bit unforgiving. Um, so you might need to just tighten that nut up there just to crush them up a bit to suit the situation, to literally suit the distance between the two pairs of holes on the heel board. Again, it slid down behind the um, valance closing panels. Again, very tight touching, but I think, I think it's me meant to be like that. Uh, obviously, if you've just painted all the underneath of your car, yeah, you could end up scratching some of that off. But um, yeah, I've just got that located with a peg into that hole. My issue seems to be, and it may just be down to the the unsquashiness of these new nylon um, bushes there, is the distance between the holes in these two rear in these two rear uh, trunnions so literally the distance between the pair of holes in the in the boot floor now you'd naturally think that the the distance between these two holes between those two holes and, and those two holes is fixed because they've already been pre-drilled in the in the in the boot floor but my concern was and 
which is why I've tried the sub frame in there before I weld the rear valance on is could the shell be dipping that way shortening the distance between that point and that point so I've got the trolley jack big lump of uh, floor floorboard there I'm just going to take the load off this central area here just just jack it up a little bit and just to see if there is any subsequent deflection in the boot floor that way I've spent all my time thinking about will there be deflection in the in the in the structure that way I've um, not considered the fact that there could be deflection uh, along the boot floor on the width so like I say we're, we're in there that side and I've not put much force on that jack I've got to be honest it's just taking it's just take, taking um, a bit of the tension away and we're I'd say we're a good bolt hole apart there on the width but like I say that could physically just be to do with the the thickness of those black rubbers on there um, I did think did I put the bushes in the, the right way around should this shoulder be on the outside and should the trunnion be closer to the subframe but I'll take advice on that and um, see if I have cocked up but I, I don't think I have um, I've only got no, it's maybe it's not even a hole it's maybe three quarters of a hole it's not much uh, but it's enough to make me think have I done something wrong so we'll see well after a, a bit of a battle we've uh, managed to get the um, rear subframe in the car um, evidence of that is, is there's uh, two bolts sticking through that side and the two bolts coming through the other side um, you can see the evidence there of me plug welding the boot floor to the rear boot hinge panel you can see that's going to still need a bit of work to make it look presentable at the end subframes in underneath as you can see um, there's no rear valance on yet we've got the valance closing panels welded in position well the uh, the subframe is in um, it could have got a lot worse to be honest I really at one point, I had a thought it wasn't going to slide in there. And I think every other video I've seen, there is um, that reluctance for the subframe to go in uh, between the heel board and the um, the rear valance uh, closing panels. It is a bit of a tight squeeze in there. But um, I'll take you off the tripod and we'll have a little, we'll have a little uh, walk around. Well... Subframe heel board mountings were already on. Um, lined up quite nicely with the holes in the heel board, both sides. So the width between the holes along the heel board was fine. Needed a bit of cranking up of this nut here to give these solid nylon or whatever material they are a bit of a squeeze up. Um, just for a little bit of fine tuning you can see there's a nice gap between the end of this um, tr big sort of trunnion bolt and the the closing panel there so that's that's okay um, coming round to the the valance end of the subframe mountings I've just got the one in there at the moment because um, we are a fraction just see down there maybe not even a quarter of a hole but I'm going to run a I'm going to run a 5/16th drill down there just to 
just to just to clear that up. It's not much, but um, I don't want to continually be fighting with trying to get this subframe on and off, as undoubtedly it, uh, it will do. But the uh, valance is temporarily tech screwed back in. I think there's about four screws each side there, just to hold it in place. Um, I've just got to tidy this little arch arch up there so we can get these big washers on and off without any hindrance. So I'm just going to scallop that back there. There is a there is a joint of sorts between the the valance, the closing panel, and the arch around this area. This closing panel seems to sweep out. Seems to come along there quite straight, and then it kind of sweeps out to to meet this valance face here. So there's only that skin of valance there, and and that ends there, and there is a bit of a gap. Um, I wouldn't call it a foxhole, but it's um, it's big enough. I'm uh, not quite sure how I'm going to fill that up, whether to just fill it with weld or make a little piece up. But it does kind of flow, kind of, around the arch. And up to there, it's going to need a bit of, favourite word, fettle in there. I mean, the skin of the balance along here. <laughs> I've never ever seen those line up. The three panels coming together are just um, completely on a different planet. But um, I've pulled in the balance closing panels as best I can. Again, they're going to need a bit of a bit of a manipulation, and it's pretty much the same the other side. Um, I did, as I mentioned, on the inside, I did seam weld along the arch to boot floor joints, both sides along there, with some good penetration as you can see, along the outside there, and um, again, this area here kind of sweeps almost correctly around and again you got this deflection of the closing panel to come round and meet it I don't think there's anything wrong in the way I've fitted it it may be just bad shaped panels closing panels whatever you know they're not heritage so but again we've got a we got a bit of a gap between the trunnion and the Heel ball closing panel there. That's kind of uh, relented a little bit. It's all snugly along the boot floor, quite nice. Um, that lines up. Yeah, it's relatively a mirror image. Um, so, could have been worse. There's not much really. Looking back, I could have, I could have done different apart from maybe by more heritage parts but I think whilst we're messing around with this I'm going to get these and I think these are actually called slinging brackets um, I'm going to get those welded on I'll have to paint underneath first because I don't know you're supposed to paint under there once you've got them welded on um, Let's just stand there with an artistic brush for an hour. But, um, I'll get those welded on. I think they're slinging brackets because I've seen videos at Longbridge where there's a little peg on a, on a cradle, on a sling, which the peg goes in there and literally it's swinging around in the roof space of, of Longbridge with um, a sling on each corner of the floor pans. I'm not quite sure what these are actually called then. and then we've got the ones on the front slinging bracket with the two peg holes for the long bridge slings and those need 
uh, plug welding in there, one each side. So yeah, next job is to, like I say, drill those out, tidy welds up, try and get this valance prepped, painted within this cavity here as best I can. I've got these uh, plug weld holes to 7mm. Um, I think I'm going to plug weld along here as well, as I did from there to there. I'm just a little bit concerned about the spot welder going through three skins. It probably will do, but uh, I might give it a go. Um, but I'm not first to drilling and plug welding. It takes a bit longer. Bit of a pain in the arse to dress, but yeah, a bit more odd jobs, and then hopefully I can get all these bits of bare metal painted over. Yeah, I'll straighten that out if I can. It's all wendy-bendy there. <laughs> 